I'm Mike McAnally with Jacobs Engineering. A new modern form of streetcar service is creating a renaissance of urban rail in cities across the United States. Modern streetcar is similar to the tram lines that are prevalent in Europe, Australia, and other countries. They're being reintroduced into the U.S. during the past decade as modern streetcar, an updated version of the historic streetcars or interurban lines that were common in all U.S. cities up to the end of World War II and remain today in some of our cities like New Orleans, Philadelphia, San Francisco, and a few others. Oklahoma City's streetcar map from the early 1900s when there were more than 60 miles of electric streetcars serving the city. Well, what is modern streetcar? Modern streetcar are electric powered vehicles. It makes them clean and quiet. They're, they're not as noisy as the buses that operate on Oklahoma City streets today. They run on steel rails embedded in the street, sharing a lane with other traffic. Modern streetcars are single unit, low floor vehicles with articulated sections that allow them to navigate tight turns. They typically carry approximately 30 seated passengers and have room for over 100 standees or standing passengers. This configuration is common because most trips are short and standing is often convenient. They also have interior room for onboard fare vending and bicycles. Modern streetcars are typically powered by an overhead catenary electrical system, although some can travel for short distances using battery power, and there are new technologies under development that will provide hybrid powered vehicles with a generator on board and the ability to either operate on wire or off wire with storage batteries. The vehicles are designed for in-street mixed traffic operation. They also operate in exclusive lanes dedicated for the streetcar. Stops would be located approximately every two to three blocks along the streetcar line. Traffic signal priority at key intersections could be used to allow lights to stay green for approaching streetcars and shorten the red time for streetcars stopped at intersections. Where a streetcar has to make a turn at an intersection, a separate signal phase will provide priority for the streetcar to safely clear the intersection uh, while other traffic is, is on a red cycle. Streetcar fare collection would be via ticket purchases from ticket machines either on the vehicles or at stops and stations, and it could be a combination of both. There might also be a free fare system utilized in the downtown area. Fares for the streetcar could be integrated with other transit buses and also with downtown parking garages. There might also be monthly passes for streetcar passengers. The streetcar vehicles are single unit electrical powered running on steel wheels on steel rails. They're articulated, meaning they can bend in the middle with, to go around corners with an accordion-like section in between the three main sections of the streetcar. Vehicles are double-ended with an operator's cab at both ends, allowing for operation in either direction. Doors are located on both sides of the vehicle, so stops can be located either curbside or in the middle of the street in the median. The center portion of the vehicle is low floor, allowing wheelchairs and strollers to roll on and off at the stops. Vehicle floor height is typically 14 inches at the door enabling near level boarding from a 10 inch high curb platform with a bridge plate ramp uh, to adjust for the change in height. Vehicles are manufactured in different widths, ranging from seven and a half feet wide to eight and a half feet wide, which can accommodate either three or four passengers seated abreast plus the middle aisle. Streetcar vehicles are a good fit with the downtown urban environment. They vary in size, but typically are 66 to 99 feet long and seven and a half to eight and a half feet wide. So they can operate within downtown traffic lanes, which are typically 11 to 12 feet wide. The turning radius for a streetcar ranges from 60 feet to around 66, similar to a truck or bus. Vertical grades as steep as six to nine percent can be climbed easily by streetcars. Compared to light rail or commuter rail, street rail, uh, streetcar is much smaller than the larger light rail vehicles 
And light rail or commuter rail usually operate in multi-car trains of two or more units coupled together. Streetcar stops are generally of a similar scale as bus stops with similar length platforms because the platforms do not need to extend the, the full length of the vehicles but only the space between the doors. Stops can be located approximately every two to three blocks at appropriate locations considering adjacent land use, parking, traffic operations, and the horizontal and vertical geometry of the street. The layout and design of individual stations will be dependent on a number of factors which are still being determined. Stations can be located either curbside in the outside lane of the street or in the median in the central portion of between the, the travel lanes of the street. The length can vary uh, depending on the vehicles that are to be utilized in the system. But most stations are eight feet wide and require 60 feet plus or minus uh, for the length of the curbside station. Curbside stations require about eight feet of width and the median stations require about 10 feet of width. Streetcar construction will cause short-term impact on adjacent land uses. Rails are installed in 600 foot lengths of continuously welded rail in a pavement cut that is 8 feet wide and 12 to 14 inches deep. A trench only 8 feet wide and 12 inches deep needs to be removed from the roadway. The construction then in, includes re, reinforcement bar filled with concrete and positioning the rails with spacers. Once utility adjustments are completed, track construction can be accomplished within a three-week period for each 600-foot two block long segment, minimizing the duration of construction impacts on the adjoining properties. Streetcar tracks can take a variety of configurations. A couplet in which one set of tracks runs on a separate street in a different direction allows the streetcar to benefit two different streets while minimizing traffic impacts. The benefits of having routes close together within a block or two is that passengers can reach their destinations in a timely manner by walking a block to catch a streetcar running in their desired direction, while not having to ride the entire route to get around to the point that they're destined to. Bidirectional pairing facilitates pedestrian activity along the couplet route, and with the implementation of wayfinding technology, allows riders to gauge their transit trip time more accurately. Well, questions that are commonly asked about streetcar are things like where does it go, how do I ride it, how much does it cost, and how do I tell when I want to get off? Can I take my bike? Can I take my dog? Well, I'd like to show a few videos that will show you exactly what it is like to be a streetcar rider today in Portland and Seattle. Starting a, a streetcar trip in downtown Seattle, this is the South Lake Union trolley approaching its stop that is closest to the downtown area. You see the raised curb where it's just a slight step up to the floor of the vehicle. There's a yellow tactile warning strip along the edge of the platform that warns passengers to not get too close to the approaching vehicle. This group boarding shows you the seat available seating for passengers. Note that there are two seats on one side and a single seat over on the opposite side of the aisle. There's also room for standees and there's open space near the floor in the center of the vehicle where wheelchairs or strollers can roll on to the streetcar and remain in that low floor center section. This is a night scene. This is in Portland. You see the approaching streetcar vehicle and the lights reflect on the rails that are embedded in the street. This is a two-lane street, so the streetcar is traveling in one lane with other vehicles, and then opposing traffic is in the opposite lane. The vehicles are well lit. They present a safe environment that is conducive to a strong sense of neighborhood and community. 
Another scene in Portland, daytime, boarding the streetcar. You get the sense of how people enjoy mixing and, and experiencing the uh, community of being a passenger on the streetcar. This is a scene of the streetcar operating in a five-lane boulevard with parking along the outside lanes. There's a track going either direction on the two sides of the street. You see the streetcar proceeding southbound and then the track for northbound traffic on this opposite side. When there are no passengers at the stop, the streetcar just proceeds on down its route. This is a streetcar in Portland going through a pedestrian plaza at Portland State University. The streetcar is not in the road, it's actually operating in the pedestrian plaza that goes right in front of the administration building of the downtown campus. And the final video is a scene taken in the operator's cab at the end of the streetcar vehicle. This is also in Portland. You can see it's operating in this stretch in a very narrow two-lane street with adjacent curbside parking. It's approaching an intersection that's stop sign controlled, and the streetcar has to operate just like any other vehicle. It has to wait for traffic to clear through the intersection, stop at the stop sign, and proceed when it's safe to proceed on. You see the adjacent angle parking on one side and parallel parking on the other. The white stripe that is along the edge of the parallel parking spaces warns drivers that their vehicle needs to be inside that white area so that the streetcar can proceed without Im any impact on the adjacent parked vehicles. Stops at the intersection waiting for the traffic signal to change. There's no signal priority. It's just a matter of going with the flow. You see an intersection where another streetcar line crosses at a right angle and there's a Y connecting for movement between the two lines when necessary. If you have the opportunity to visit these communities, you can see that it is an eye-opening experience to appreciate what they have done with, by adding streetcar to enhance the walkability of their downtown commercial and entertainment and residential areas. Existing modern streetcar cities include three that are currently operating modern streetcar systems developed in the last decade. These are Portland, Seattle, and Tacoma up in the Pacific Northwest. Portland began development of their streetcar system in 1998 and has expanded in several phases to become the largest system in the U.S. today. Seattle and Tacoma followed Portland's lead in developing their systems. Seattle and Portland are both completing major expansions of their original systems. The list of cities that are currently planning and constructing modern streetcar systems is expanding coast to coast. A major factor is the increasing cost of comparable light rail transit systems that are now in the range of 70 to 80 million dollars per mile versus a modern streetcar system with costs typically in the range of 20 to 30 million dollars per mile. The streetcar serves the purpose of a circulator for the last mile of trips to the downtown area, but there are increasingly cities building high-speed streetcars to operate and serve commuter trips. Today, there are more than 30 U.S. cities committed to developing streetcars. These include operating heritage or replica historic streetcars such as exist in San Francisco, Philadelphia, and New Orleans. New Orleans has the longest continuously operated U.S. streetcar system, using replica systems with old-looking streetcars that are in fact newly assembled. Replicas are also operated in Little Rock, Galveston, Tampa, Memphis, and other cities. Modern streetcar systems operating in Portland, Seattle, and Tacoma, and soon to be operating in other communities, including Tucson, Washington, D.C., Atlanta, Salt Lake City, Kansas City, St. Louis, San Antonio, and Oklahoma City. These cities are building streetcar systems because they recognize the benefit it will provide to both mobility and economic development by making their downtowns a walkable, pedestrian-friendly place that will be competitive with other communities in attracting businesses, workers, residents, and visitors. 
It's been proven in communities around the world that pedestrian circulation drives urban development. Experience shows that modern streetcar projects will spur employment, increases in property value, and general economic growth by stimulating movement to downtown's historic areas and entertainment facilities. Modern streetcar projects in the U.S., including Portland and Seattle, initially developed demonstration projects to illustrate how streetcars can successfully integrate with and, and enhance urban environments. A starter project that is feasible in terms of cost, length, and connectivity, while also being mindful of long-term expansion opportunities, is well positioned to complement downtown development as a mixed-use, walkable environment and to integrate with future expansions. Streetcar will create accessible properties located within one to three blocks of the streetcar line. It will extend the accessibility of existing metro transit service to include the first or last mile of downtown trip ends. By extending the distance a person can comfortably walk, streetcars amplify the benefits of pedestrian scale communities and promote healthy urban living by encouraging active lifestyles, creating connections between community members, and promoting safety. Increases in real estate value tend to encourage property owners to realize that additional revenue can be received by developing, enhancing, and promoting their buildings within the streetcar corridor, in turn attracting new business and new customers. Communities around the country are already seeing the benefits of their investment in streetcar, with significant mixed-use development occurring within a few blocks of their streetcar systems. Much of this development was propelled by the level of pedestrian and retail activity that the streetcars generate. In Portland, over $3.5 billion in new development has occurred as a result and in proximity to the $54 million investment in developing their current streetcar system. In Seattle, comparably, $2.3 billion in development occurred with a $103 million investment in the streetcar system. The next steps in the MAPS 3 streetcar process are to narrow down the route options for locating the alignment within the downtown area. There will be at least one additional public meeting held when that recommendation is determined, and then the city will be finalizing the recommended route for the streetcar. The next steps are to go into preliminary and final engineering design. That will include procurement of the desired vehicles and the track or rail to be used in constructing the system. Final construction and then testing before placing the system in operation with a planned operating date in 2017. Concluding, this is a scene in Portland. This was at the time they began their initial starter project. That young man waving at the streetcar today is about 19 years old. So it shows you the enduring impact that it is having on these Northwest communities and why other communities nationwide are committed to developing the equivalent systems for a modern streetcar in their downtown areas. Thank you.